Jonathan. Hey, how's it going, Kim? Good. Do we have anything in the inbox today for Trust Your Science? Yeah, I'm sure we do. Let's take a look. Uh, oh, here's a good one. So we got a customer here who's looking to see what it takes to develop a comprehensive single LCMS MS method for forensic toxicology drug panel. And they're looking to analyze over 80 samples. Is this possible? Wow, okay, that's a challenge. You know, a lot of these compounds, they can vary in nature a bit. Um, I've seen them done by immunoassay, yep. um, GCMS, LCMSMS, um, to try to take all of that and combine it into one single method. How many methods are app? They're looking they said for 80? Yeah, 80 compounds in a single comprehensive LCMSMS method. Hmm. It definitely sounds like something that we should try to yeah. explore for them because that's a big challenge, but we might be out of our comfort zone. Comfort zone. Right. Yeah, I think we might need to call in somebody. Let's call in the special, special apps. apps. Let's do, do it. it. I know just the right person. Great. John. Hey, hey John. How are you? Wow. Hey, Kim. Hey, Jonathan. Fantastic. <laughs> that was fast. Well, we are pretty special. Oh, my gosh. Well, I'm so glad you're here. We glad have a question here. that came in through the Trust Your Science mailbox. Okay. And this scientist wants to do a forensic toxicology panel for 80 compounds. 80. 80. 80, not 80. 80. 80. Yep. 80. Okay. All by LCMS. And mm -hmm. I mean, I know these things have been done by immunoassay, GCMS, LCMS, you know, what do you think we can do? Well, I think we can help them because we've actually done an application like that. Awesome. But this is going to be probably in urine matrix, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So are there some special considerations we have to take in mind there for the sample pretreatment? Yeah. Well, in urine, many of the compounds are going to be conjugated. That means they'll be changed by the body. It'll stick things on there to make them more water soluble so they can be eliminated through the urine. So that's something we have to consider. And typically what we'll do is we'll deconjugate them. Okay. Meaning we'll use an enzyme or something, sort of cleave off these groups to make the analysis simpler and to make the reporting simpler as well. Right, because that increases the amount then of the parent compound, right? And it makes the detection simpler. Yes, in fact, many of these compounds are about 90 to 95% conjugated. So it really makes a big difference if you don't do that very efficiently. Interesting. Okay. Maybe you I... can, yeah, maybe, maybe you can show us some data. We're sure. all about the data here. Okay. So Kim, 80 compounds, huh? Yes, this customer is looking for a whole mix. Things like stimulants, benzodiazepines, opiates, um, bath salts. Cocaine? Cocaine too, yep. Even PCP in the application that we did. It's oh. making a comeback in some places. Wow. wow, so you've got a wide variety here. We do have a wide variety and they have a lot of different properties. So we need to consider all of those. So this needs to be a fast method, even with 80 compounds. Well, we can still do that pretty fast. Uh, we use the BEH column. It's a nice rugged column and it's good for many of these compounds. Uh, the mobile phases are fairly typical. Formic acid and water and acetonitrile and with that column and the resolution we get, like I said, we can do it all in about three minutes. Wow, three minutes, that's fast. Yep, uh, it's very important for some of these labs that are looking for high throughput to sort of maximize their profit and what they can do. All right, John, so when you ran the chromatography, I'm seeing this and wow, does that look messy. Yeah, on the surface it does look messy. However, as you know, with mass spec, we get a lot of separation and specificity with the instrument. However, there are some things we do have to be concerned about compounds like morphine and hydromorphone, or phentermine and methamphetamine that are isomers of each other that need to be separated. And in this method, they are all baseline separated so we can get good quality confirmation and quantitation for all of these compounds. So 80 compounds, even in under four minutes, you can do it. Yep, plus the internal standards. Ooh. Wow. So John, the chromatography was really cool. I love that you could get 80 peaks out in under four minutes. Yeah, pretty impressive, isn't it? Really impressive. And can you talk a little bit now about the sample pretreatment and the cleanup for these samples? Sure. I'm glad you mentioned the pretreatment because we mentioned before we have to enzymatically treat them to deconjugate them. But unlike older methods where you would typically do that in a vial and then transfer it to another vial and then transfer it to the, the cartridge, we can do it all in the well of the SPE plate. So no transferring, no worries about losing it or cross-contamination. And because of the nature of the um, the solid phase extraction sorbent, we can do it in the well. Why is that, John? 
Well, because these are aqueous samples and we're using a microelution plate, uh, these samples will just sit on top of the frit and they won't go through at all until we apply some vacuum. So because of that, like I said, we can do all the pretreatment within the well itself and not have to transfer it. Fantastic, that saves a lot of time. It does save a lot of time. Not only that, but we can, after that, we can finish up the pretreatment by adding the phosphoric acid. Once again, we just mix it in the, in the well of the plate and then we're ready to go. Cool. And what about the sample uh, cleanup itself? Well, the sample cleanup, we're using a strong cation exchanger. Most of the compounds are bases, so that's appropriate. However, we need to do some modifications. Some of those benzodiazepines are actually acidic. Um, the good thing about them is they're not very polar. They're a bit hydrophobic compared to the other compounds. So because of that, we can use actually the reverse phase characteristics of the sorbent to retain them. We just change our wash a little bit. Instead of washing with, say, 100% methanol or something like that, if we wash with only 20% methanol, all the benzos will stay on there by reverse phase. Everything else stays on there by ion exchange, and we get a very nice cleanup um, that's appropriate for all of our compounds. Awesome. So this procedure works for 80 compounds. 80 compounds, exactly. All right. Let's see the data. Okay. So, John, what are we looking at here? We're looking at recovery data. Okay. Now, by recovery, I mean extraction efficiency. Mm -hmm. If I put 10 nanograms of something in, how much do I get out? And what we see here is on average, we're getting about 80, 90% recovery for all of these compounds. A couple of them are a little low, but the important thing is they're very, very consistent. Not only do we want high recovery, but we want it to be the same every single time. And that's what we see here, very low RST, consistent recovery to allow us to get accurate quantification for these things. That's great, but what about the matrix effects? Well, that's a consideration, especially with urine. So when we're dealing with urine, oftentimes we'll, ha we'll have some matrix effects. Now, they're a lot better than if we just did a dilute and shoot method. Right, because um, we did the solid phase extraction. Exactly, so we did clean it up, but they are still there, especially with the early eluting compounds, because there's a lot of really polar things in urine. However, we can mitigate those. So because we added the internal standards, those are actually correct for a lot of these matrix effects we see. What happens is, you get some ion suppression for the compound, you get the same ion suppression for the internal standard, and those basically balance out. So when we look at our corrected matrix effects, the vast majority of them are right around zero. You got a couple of them at 20 or 30 percent, but for the most part, it really minimizes those matrix effects we were seeing before. Huh? So between the internal standards and the cleanup for sample prep, we really get a good, consistent response for all of these compounds. Oh, that's perfect. Wow, John, that was a lot of work. It certainly was. But I think you showed that, you know, you can actually simplify the sample pretreatment for the 80 compounds. You can do the solid phase extraction to get rid of the matrix effects, especially with that internal standard trick you showed. Yep. Um, it's really possible to do 80 compounds in a short period of time. Yep, and it's really using the entire solution. Like you said, the pretreatment, the sample prep, the chromatography, and the mass spectrometer. So how do you want to call this myth? I mean, how do you want to wrap this up? Well, what do you think? It's definitely trusted. I mean, the work that you did, John, is amazing. Um, with some careful considerations and some careful laboratory techniques, this definitely can be pulled off. Sure can. I love the special apps. They always get the tough ones. <laughs> Let's write it up. All right. If you'd like your question to be answered on a future episode, please feel free to email us at trustyourscience at waters.com.